What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand arterial wounds so that you can identify and treat them in your patients. And also pass the NPTE. Arterial wounds occur because the arteries are injured, whether there's a leakage, a blockage, or a narrowing of the vessels that slows and eventually stops blood flow. Related conditions can include peripheral artery disease, thromboembolisms, and atherosclerosis. The areas most affected are those that are farthest from the heart. So the areas that, you know, the heart can't push through that blockage enough to get there. So the lateral ankle, the dorsal foot, and the web space between the toes. Decreased blood flow means there's not enough oxygen and nutrients to meet the demands of the tissues, resulting in ischemia, pain, and dying tissue. These patients may also have compromised pulses, delayed capillary refill, cold and hairless legs, and intermittent claudication. Dependent rubor is another symptom your patients may have, and it means that the leg depends on gravity to help the blood get to those tissues. Once your leg is elevated, you're going to lose that blood, you're going to lose the color of the skin, so it'll become even more pale and painful than it was before. ABI, or ankle brachial index, can indicate your patient's risk for developing an arterial wound. Usually 1 to 1.3 is considered normal. Anything lower than 1 puts them at risk for an arterial wound, and the lower the number, the higher the risk. If the patient has an ABI above 1.3, guess what? They're also at risk for an arterial wound. Because there's less blood flow to the area, the wounds will be pretty dry. And depending on how far they've developed, the tissue may be dead or decayed already. So you could see black escar, you could see gangrene, and a lot of times these injuries result in an amputation. Treatment includes first controlling comorbidities like diabetes or hypertension and stopping them from smoking. You want to really make sure that these patients are medicated properly for their conditions. Light walking for longer periods of time, up to about a 5 or 6 out of 10 on the pain scale, are really good for helping to revascularize these areas if the patient is able. Otherwise, surgeries to help revascularize the area might help, as well as wound vacs to try to draw some of that blood into the area. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. In patients with arterial insufficiencies, the leg depends on gravity to help get blood flow to the tissue, so elevation will decrease that blood supply, causing paleness and increased pain due to ischemia. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can drop me a comment with questions or suggestions on videos I should do in the future. Good luck studying, go change the world.